I have two arms. I have two arms. I got two arms. No geese. No geese. No. What? I could have gave you a wet willy. Do you know what that is? Yes. Give me that ear. Nope. Give me the ear. You're a bully. Yeah, I am. Okay. Still love you. Still love you, too. Yeah. Okay, so P.O. unboxing. Yeah, um, time to open some shit. Very small load, actually, this time around. Can't remember why that is, aside from the fact that we, had, that a lot of the bo that we have no huge boxes this time. Mm. So, let's just get right to this. Keep it simple. You know what? What, though? What? I think GQ thinks that it's time for us to now forgive Justin Bieber. See, I have the garbage bag. Yeah, but it's not open or ready. And I could have just had more satisfaction throwing it across the room. And I have to go and pick it up now. No, I won't make you do that. I'll just let the robot do that. What robot? The one right there. What have you done? Anyway, you have a letter. Yes. This is from Brian Walner. Let's open this letter. What was that song from Blue's Clues with the letters? I forgot what it was. <laughs> All right. I know Blue's could do, we can do. No, that's something else. Blue's I know, Clues, and like, I, 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 we I, I, have I, got the letter. I wonder who it's from, or something like yeah. that. Dear Lewis and Vega, hi there, it's me, Brian Walmer. Brahu Wabla. B W R B W Rosas. On YouTube. Hope you're doing well. And having fun planning your wedding. <sighs> uh, wedding planning. Wedding planning. Wedding planning. Good times. Ah! Ah! Brides to be. You you can relate. I was planning to send more stuff to you guys via regular mail and Amazon a lot sooner, but I, but financially that couldn't be done till now. Hope you guys understand. So no, good. No worries about it. Uh, now I'm glad to hear your channel here on YouTube is up and running again. Seems internet reviewers like yourself and Vega are easy targets for them to go after. Yeah, uh huh? Well, yeah. Except here's the thi well, here's the thing about me, my, my channel getting taken down very briefly over over a weekend. Uh, it was no particular company that did it. It wasn't any you know special uh, uh thing that happened. It's it's that whenever YouTube changes something, it runs basically all videos through the content ID again, but slightly more strenuously. So, so I got about 25 content ID matches all at once, and YouTube, in their infinite automatic wisdom, said, Well, clearly this is some kind of bot or spam channel. Delete it! This is why people are going to vid me. Uh, yeah, but some of us also oh, need to, you know, make money. <laughs> speaking of which, by the way, have you ever thought of creating a channel on vidme? Good question! You could see my vidme at Vega Loves. And because uh, ScreenWave has ended their partnership with the JW Player, if you follow my website, hint, hint, wink, wink, I've been talking about this, uh, my player is switching over to VidMe. And there's lots of think videos about how to, well, you know, it says new stuff on VidMe, new ways to share stuff and tag things. So check that out. I have rewatched the videos featuring the last packages I sent you and to help Vig out and knowing what DC films are coming to theaters, the DC films coming this out is Wonder Woman and Justice League. Well, I'll be seeing them. Yeah, unfortunately. Wonder Woman, I am hoping, will at least be decent. That silhouette makes her look preggers. Scott McCloud tweeted it early, like earlier today. He was like, is that pregnant? Oh, hashtag silhouette fail. Look at the poster. I'll have to look at the poster. On the subject of DC superhero films, do you think Marvel will do another in-theater screen for, as a, for a marathon of all their MCU? There's too many now to do that. With the, it's not like a 24-hour marathon. Yeah, and I think, and you want to know if it's like, will he play it safe and just play the Avengers movies? Which, you know what, that seems re more reasonable. Uh, I have a recommendation of a webcomic series, uh, Mr. Internet Man. Um, it's over at mrinternetman.deviantart.com. The series is called Mystic Makeover. It focuses on a young female college geek named Veronica, who's given a mystical lipstick called Nightshade, and when she applies it to herself, she becomes a mischievous, mischievous demon elf called Demonica. And then they basically described Demonica comic 
Uh, however, I'm curious about one thing, Lewis. Don't know if this happened to you or any time would happen when you were in the process of reviewing a story arc in a series of comics. What I'm getting at is Archie stopped releasing Sonic. Uh, this is a long letter, so I'm kind of going through it. Yeah, we, we got a lot of stuff we still got to get through despite having less. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, friends, it's just... Uh... But Sonic Comics, for the most part, the run was one of not the best-selling books they had going. Recently, though, it seems as though the contribution with Archie and Sega, that's Sega Japan and America, was recently up for renewal. Now, I don't know what goes into a negotiating contract between comic companies and outside franchises that want to adapt into a comic book kind of thing, but it, should take, but it shouldn't take this long, should it? It happens. Do you think the blame is justified because people are blaming Riverdale, which has nothing to do with it? So honestly, I so. have a hard time seeing the connection, but whatever. Because Riverdale's based on Archie, but moodier and angstier it's not just that the show is apparently freaking balls it's just it's just balls to the wall ballsy insane and like what what the hell are you people doing kind of thing it's like basically like what if archie was twin peaks and edgy yeah like everyone on my twitter every week is like talking about it. i'm just like i have no interest in this but you make me want to have interest i have so little interest in archie in any form whatsoever i grew up with archie so I know Archie, but when I saw that first clip of it, I was like, this is not Archie. I don't get Archie. <laughs> it's just redhead in high school and his love triangle and stupid friends. Yeah, that sounds dumb. It is dumb, but it lasted for like almost 100 years because of it. That's my entire point. It's this, this, well, I don't, this does not sound interesting to me. Everyone, make him review Archie comics. No, people we complain when I review Archie comics no, because I don't, do it because, more. because I make don't him, recognize make characters. Do it more. I don't know who these people <laughs> are. Do it more. I never read Archie. Make him do Archie. Okay, um, now I do want to know if you or Vega have ever heard of the TV trope Lustful Melt. And the description is a fairly common staple of Western animation. It involves a character being so enamored with each other, their whole body turns into a puddle of goo. Yeah, it's a cartoon thing. What about it? It's car It's cartoon language for coming. Basically, yeah. It, it, it is cartoon language. And here is the link as well. And I'm just curious, when the first time you saw this, I don't know. I saw it when I was a kid on like Looney Tunes or something. I don't know. I can't click the link because it's a letter. Okay, as for packages go along with this letter, uh, we, I don't don't know. Have the I, we don't have the packages along with it. We don't know what it. it is, but we'll, well here's some questions. Do you, Vega, do you think the MPAA will give the MLP a G rating or PG? I don't know. Uh, Lewis, uh, why don't you watch Riverdale? Because I don't care about Archie. I don't care about Archie. I don't know anything about Archie. If if not for the fact that po simple pop culture osmosis led me to know that the character's name is Archie and that there are two love interests named Betty and Veronica, I probably wouldn't even know which one was which if not for the fact that people would, like, you know, post images of it on Tumblr and crap. I say both of them could, should tell Archie to fuck off and date each other. Yeah, there you go. There. That should be a show. Betty and Veronica realized they were both in love and dated each other. That There. There's your comic. Have you guys heard of the Sabrina Online comic and what you think of it? And would and has anyone patroned you to do it as a review? Nope. Nope. Uh, have you nah, seen I never the, heard of it, sorry. Have I seen the first teaser trailer for MLP movie? Yes. Equestria, Equestria Daily just like spread it everywhere. Lewis, what three story arcs do you think DC and Warner Brothers should adapt into an animated feature? I don't know, and I'm not really that into the animated canon, so... Like, what, what do you think from comics should be animated? I don't... I, I've been saying Crisis on Infinite Earths, but 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 actually even Dwayne McDuffie, when I briefly met him the one time, I, I suggested this idea to him, and he was like, there's no reason to do Crisis because there's, because Crisis exists solely to, to you know, reboot the universe, and there's no need to reboot anything in it. I like it simply because it's an epic story, and I'll be doing the review of it this, I'm writing the review this week, so there you go. Vega, do you think the creative staff on an MLP cartoon will do an episode of the main six fusing together? No. No. What the? No, dude. No. If you mix that with the lustful melt trope, then all the ponies are coming. There you go. Rule 34. They're fusing together in one powerful entity, like AKA Garnet or something. Okay. Mega pony. And will they ever use that trope? They probably will. And it's Mega probably, horse. They probably will use that trope in LMP and it's probably going to be Pinkie Pie. Do they ever actually say the word horse in the show? Yeah. When? I don't know, they just do sometimes. Because it sounds like they only talk about ponies. Well, every pony is like everyone. Why don't they just say horse? Because they don't say horse that often. Lewis, did, what, did, how did you do your first crossover with Doug on Superman 4 review happen? Oh, God. How did it? 
How did it happen? Oh, God, that's a story. I, I've said this story like a million times now, particularly in the commentary. Okay, so... It's a nostalgic property. It's a Superman thing. So I thought, hey, this would be a great crossover fodder. Let's do this, Doug. Okay, we'll record. We'll do the script back and forth, oh, and we did that. I remember now. <laughs> so we decided, okay, we'll do it on the side when we're do after we do the Alone in the Dark crossover, because like you know, it'd be an extra day where we're not doing anything. We'll just record it then. Doug loses his voice. Well, okay, <laughs> we'll we'll well. Uh, well, we can't record that then because of the lost voice, so why don't we uh, uh, do it during the brawl? Because the brawl is going to be coming up, and we can do it do it then. Doug was too busy during the brawl, but we decided, okay, we'll record the beginning of it in a hotel room. And actually, I think I've released that footage years and years and years ago. Uh, basically, we're in front of a... We, we decided to film a green screen... Uh, a shot in the hotel room. We like pinned the green screen up and like did basically the same intro that we did in the actual review, but just you know uh, uh, as if we were in the same room together because Doug, we didn't have a chance to go over to Doug's place from the hotel. Uh, footage ended up looking terrible, so we decided to skip it. Then we decided, okay, screw this. We'll just do it in our respective locations. We'll rewrite the beginning so that it's you know just like you shooting across the screen kind of a thing. I sent him the footage. Somehow the footage ends up corrupted. Oh, so like, like the audio is fine, but the vid but I have to. Uh, my voice is already straining because I've already because I recorded the crossover bits and my my own episode for that week. God was telling you not to do this episode. That review was <laughs> cursed. So I had to re-record the video footage of all the live action segments and send them to him again. And finally he got that. And still some of the video footage still is slightly corrupted. You can <laughs> notice it a few points in the in the video. So that review was cursed, but we finally got it out there, which is the important thing. Vega, have I ever heard of the anime Paprika? Paprika? Yes, one of my favorite Satoshi Kon films. Space Adventure Cobra? Yes, I'm familiar with Cobra. Najka Blitz Tactics? I never want to see that. Marvelous Melmo? Yes, uh, like uh, manga and anime. Mel Marvelous Melmo was on uh, Anime Soul before that got shut down, so there's no legal way to watch it anymore. And what are my thoughts on it? Marvelous Melmo? That was cute. Uh, Paprika? Amazing. Highly recommend it. Space Adventure Cobra? Seen some of it, but it comes highly recommended from, like, older otaku. Najka Blitz Tactics? Nah, bro. And, Lewis, what made you hate One More Day so much? Did you not watch the 200th episode? Just, I, I, I'm pretty in-depth about it. Look at, the, um, look at the episode, like, that's probably on this side. Or this side of YouTube. I don't know which side. Just, just tag it or whatever and what are your thoughts on mary jane becoming ultimate spider woman ver ver via the carnage symbiote and ultimate spider-man cartoon i don't know i don't watch it and finally for both of you on the top of your heads what are your top five wtf anime you ever watch or comics you ever read uh the answer to all five is garzy's wing even though it's not a comic but i'm still gonna say garzy's wing well, there's probably a manga out there for garzy's wing Ah! Okay, top five what the fuck anime. Uh, I did review just one uh, recently called Wanna Be the Strongest. It's an Idols of Anime episode. Also, um, there's Chokusei ni Naruso, which is the seventh episode of uh, Idols of Anime. So there's two idol anime versions right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, man. W I can't think right now. And, yeah, and they included pictures of their MLP collection, which I don't have in this letter, so sorry. Might be in a box somewhere. Yeah, it's probably in the thingy he sent. Anyway, what is the name of the person there again? Brian something, or Bell something. Mr. Dude. Guy. Question guy. All my, these letters are fucked up. Brian Walmer. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Also, while we were reading that, I opened up this one. It has Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters, the uh, series that led out of Battle for Bloodhaven. Uh, some of my commenters were talking about this recently, actually. Yeah. So, it's it's a for... And basically, the thing they said was, man, it led to that awful miniseries that nobody ever er, talks about anymore because it was god-awful. Okay, so this one just came from Amazon, and it's Sailor Moon R the movie on Blu-ray! What? Fuck yeah, Sailor Moon! Oh, uh, pity we don't need that because we have the VHS. <laughs> no, we have S on oh, VHS. Oh, right, right, right. Actually, I prefer that one. I think I mentioned that in the episode. S is my favorite, and as soon as they make a theatrical or Blu-ray of that, I, I need it because... It's like, not going to be as good, though, because they're going to use the original Japanese music, and I frankly prefer the dub music. 
I, and mostly, they're, I'm worried about the new dub. I mean, the new dub is alright, but I miss Luna's old voice. I just, I like, I like Luna's old dub voice. Mm. Shoot me. I, it just, ugh. This is from uh, Terry Hackney, which might be an eBay purchase. Uh, Kronos Carnival. Let me see. Huh. I think someone mentioned this one too recently. It's a 2000 AD thing. All right. What I'm opening is from cyberspacecomics.com. The only comics that come from cyberspace. And it's Mark Miller's The Unfunny. I have it already. You do? Yes, I have the individual issues. I have them. They're sitting in a box in, in, a, in a binder. I will review it someday. I just have no rush to review it. Mark Miller time. But thank you for that, because that was exactly what I needed. You haven't had a Miller time for a while. Uh, I have a Miller time coming up, but but that's only for Frank Miller. Also, yeah, they you, taped it to the inside of the box. You did do it and change the logo that? and cross it out to make it Mark Miller, though. Uh, this is Incarnate. I don't know what that is. Who's it from? Oh, it's, oh, wait, it's the Nick Simmons comic. I oh, my God, that one, the one where he copied. Okay, so if you don't know about this, Nick Simmons is the um, son of Gene Simmons. Yep. And he had a, a comic called Incarnate. It's from Robert Webb, it might be an eBay purchase. And the thing that's infamous about this, the thing that got it canceled, was that he pretty much traced over Bleach. A few other uh, manga as well. He, yeah, but Bleach was the one that everyone noticed because it was the biggest shonen at the time. It's still a, like a very. It's gonna be remembered forever. Bleach was the biggest shonen. Now the problem thing. is that people have actually requested I review Incarnate for a while, ever ever since news broke about this. Problem is, I've never read Bleach. I've never read half the stuff he plagiarized. I, I, I so can, I'm in I no. So I'm in no <laughs> position to to say, oh well, good one there. It's 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 just like oh that this is probably a crappy story. I can help with the manga parts. Anyway, I'm just opening something from Michael Legs. Wait. No. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh -oh. They gave me a whole bunch of stuff that was not... Okay, I gotta... Wait, I, I think there's... We have to take this back. Yeah, we have to take this back. Basically, the P.O. box, they gave me like three or four packages. Uh, like, like one or two packages at least right, uh, to, for other people. I'll put this over here. It looks pretty important in there, so we gotta take that back yep. tomorrow. We, uh, we will take care of that. There's another one that's still sitting in the car. Alright, I got here... From uh, eBay purchase, definitely. Uh, we got Sidekick by J. Michael Straczynski. Oh, cool. Well, as an Evangeline hardcover trade paperback by Liefeld. Oh, dear. And Gen 13 by Gail Simone. Oh, cool. Hmm. So I'm opening something from George J. Horvath. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, George. All right. Greetings and salutations from the land of obscusion. Ooh. Go check out that blog, by the way. Like, I, does he say what, what the thing is? It's, I just, it's right there. <laughs> so, yeah, land of obscusion with free Hungarian flag. Ooh, we got a Hungarian flag in there. First off, I apologize to Vega for making her cry on an internet video seen by thousands. Don't worry, they were happy tears. Uh, if I meet you at the next anime next, then you have permission to beat me down into a pulp. As a as someone who is a guest at Anime Next 2017, I will bring my sock and boppers and uh yeah, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Especially for that dumb Rick roll I also did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sock and boppers to the face, George. Anyway, I figured that since both of you have been getting Sailor Moon parodies and pornos, how about getting an anime parody in the form of of Papillion Rose? Brought to us by Made in Japan. A papillion parody. Oh. Oh my. Oh, can I show the back? Oh. Well, I could show the back in the front. It looks pretty racy. I have a weakness for girls with pink hair. Like, mmm, pink haired characters. Pink mm. hair, is, hair is very cool. This is another box that is not for me. <laughs> and oh. I. Oh man, they they've been giving us. They gave. I mean, admittedly, the guy there said that was it was his first, like like his first or second day. So. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, maybe they shouldn't have had him do doing that stuff uh, if it was his first or second day. Yes, yes. Anyway, uh, also to continue the Dawn Blue Love, have some fun with Dragon's Lair 3D for the GameCube. Ooh. Here, 
Can you unwrap yeah, that? Yeah, I'll unwrap that. Oh. And this must be the Hungarian flag. There you go, Dragon Slayer. Flags. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Which, imagine a 3D arcade game as a 3D hack and slash platformer for Vega or Lewis, if she is so inclined. There's a sweet, sweet for this for PSP. Sweet Fuse. Looks like... If you play it, it has... If in it, you play as the fictional niece of the game developer Keiji Inafume, Mega Man guy, mm -hmm. as she gets caught in a plot to destroy her uncle's new theme park. Also included are some... Hakuoki? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. And Story of Sai and Koku. Oh, cool. I've heard really good things about Story of Sai and Koku, and it has this nice little box. This is like a fancy box. Oh. There's nothing in it. Yay! It's a fancy box! I don't know. I could put business cards in it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's... No... I thought the discs might be in something else, but yeah, if you were if you were trying to send me the series, there's no series in it. So I just got the box. Yeah, I think the discs are supposed to go here. Ah. Uh. So I'm sorry, dude, but you just sent us the box. But it's a nice box. It's a very nice box. <laughs> you, like put all my Stargate DVDs in there. We could use a CD uh, holder. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's see. I hope to finally meet Vega and show her that New Jersey is not the worst. Regards, George. Sorry, George, but New Jersey is still the worst for it does not have all the discs of Story of Sai and Goku. <laughs> what else we got in there? Uh, we got this bandana. Bandanas are cool. Cool. It looks like a Hitalia bandana. All right, and some trading cards. Ooh, show those up to the camera. You got uh, this one. I haven't seen... Reddit. Hawkwoman. Captain Britain. Captain Britain. And She-Hulk. Woot. And one more thing. Hmm. Looks like some sort of... Banana, tissues, a flag. A Bishonen flag? Oh, this is uh, the thing he was t uh, saying. Haku Oki. I don't know what that is. Well, obviously, it's some sort of pretty boy anime. That pretty boy is in the past. Pretty boys. <laughs> Thank you. Very pretty. Why don't you stuff that uh, uh, cardboard box inside of this garbage bag while I read another letter okay. with some other presents here. Dear Lewis, greetings from Circle Pines, Minnesota. That's not that too far away. I uh, hope this letter finds you and Vega well and in good spirits. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I was the one who sent you the comic adaptation of Octopussy a few months back. I'm sure the audience watching the unboxing may be wondering what the hell I'm talking about, but that's because it was part of the unboxing Lost to Time. <laughs> yep, I remember that now. So anyway, I think I'll just stick with the theme of sending a James Bond comic adaptation, this being, from what I feel is the most underrated of the franchise, License to Kill. <laughs> I remember License to Kill. It was all right. Dalton's not a bad Bond. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you, should you ever decide to review it or the aforementioned Octopussy, my one request is to bring back the Sean Connery voice, even though those comics feature Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore. Of course. I mean, I do it for his nephew. Why wouldn't I do it for everything else? Also, I'm sending you a, bo a box set of a big, fin big finish audio drama, The Diary of River Song, featuring the Eighth Doctor. Mm. Yeah, check that out. Cool. Uh, I know you're a fan of the audio dramas and thought this would be something of interest to you, and an odd discovery made while going through a bunch of books. A trade of a Marvel comic series written by George R.R. R. Martin, the creator of Game of Thrones. Huh. It's apparently a prequel to Game of Thrones. I'm not sure if you're into the series. I'm not. Since you're super busy with reviewing and occasionally burning comics, but it might be fun to do if you want to capitalize on the show's popularity. Not a bad idea, and I'm always interested in making more money. Yeah, do it right before the next season. Finally, since you'll be closing the P.O. Box soon, I'm, well, we're, we'll see because we we because right now we're actually pretty good because stuff slowed down a bit, not like hugely slowed down because these things still oh, take like crap. forever. I opened someone else's thing again. Okay, put it back in the thing. I already broke their box. I know, but but you know, there's nothing else we can do. Although I am also into the salt, fat, acid, heat diet. <laughs> 
Uh, since I'm uh, hoping you can answer a few random nerd related questions, and well, bear in mind, people, if I'm going to close the PO box, I will make a huge deal of it and you'll know, announce it from the heavens. You will know if I'm going to close it. And if we don't open your package, maybe some other person has it because some because we got three or four other people's packages in this. <sighs> Number one, what is your opinion of Peter... Uh, he has some questions. What is your opinion of Peter Cavalli's 12th Doctor? Love him. And can you off the top of your head rank the incarnations of the Doctor? No. That requires thought. People ask me to do these kind of rankings all the time. It requires a lot of time and effort to think about what I really feel about them and whether strengths and weaknesses are. Sylvester McCoy is the best, but that's pretty much all you'll get. Uh, in your first crossover with the Blockbuster Buster, there was a moment where you and him get into a spat about John Pertwee that kind of confuses me. Was that just part of the script, or you have something against John Pertwee's third Doctor? Not at all. I, I, you know, it's been a while since I don't even remember what the context was of that argument. So, yeah, I don't, I don't remember what that was actually about. Uh, but I have nothing against John Pertwee. Uh, there has never been a bad person to play the Doctor. Even in, like, comedy spoofs, he's, they've always had great people playing him. Really talented people. They're, there's never been a bad uh, uh, actor playing the Doctor. There have been bad scripts with the Doctor. Even Colin Baker, whose you know, run is, is the most maligned, it wasn't his fault. It's that the writing was garbage. Hmm. And the audio dramas have long since made up for that. Hmm. Uh, what's your favorite episode, season, and or joke from The Simpsons? Uh, in terms of episode it's still good it's still good that's not my favorite episode uh probably a tie there's like a few of them that i would put it like I, I, that i have a hard time determining my favorite uh probably probably uh treehouse of horror five with the sh i'm pretty sure it's five the shinning and uh uh and all that and and uh, time and punishment and all that uh itchy and scratchy land is a big one for me and as well as the one where uh, Bart becomes a hall monitor and Lisa becomes a rebel. Very Cromulent episode. Yes, because it's, it, because the inverse dynamic is so interesting and Bart is so effective at being an authority figure. And he works so well with it. And I love it. And, uh, and, and I feel the humor works and I think the character dynamics, the dynamics are great. And Bart's sacrifice at the end is wonderful. Mm. Uh, now, my favorite joke is actually from... Uh, uh, time and Punishment, which, which after several attempts by Homer to try to fix, you know, to not change the past, finally he just snaps. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch anything! I'll touch whatever I feel like! It starts beating up everything, killing things at random. <laughs> he just doesn't care anymore, because screw this! That was hilarious. That is no, the best part of that was, like, he, he was in the perfect world, and he asked for a donut, but there was none, and he left. And right when he left, he's like, oh, it's raining again. It's just donuts raining from the sky. I remember reading, like, one one of the writers always, like, feels really sad at the, about that scene because it's like, if he just stayed a few seconds longer. <laughs> <laughs> you made many references to your love of GX, but have you ever gone to watch 5Ds and other, any other series? Not yet. I'm eventually going to watch 5Ds, but right now I'm just not into it uh, right now. Uh, should you ever do a wedding event comics month, would you consider doing it with Vega as a sort of couples review? I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind that either. I'm starting to get into the Doctor Who audio dramas, and I was wondering if you can make any recommendations. Also, have you listened to the Six Doctors Regeneration story at The Last Adventure? And if so, what was your opinion? Have not listened to it yet. In terms of, of uh, Doctor Who audio drama stuff, uh, Spare Parts, it's the Fifth Doctor one, which is basically Genesis of the Cybermen. Uh, most of the Dalek ones are actually pretty good. Uh, any of the Eighth Doctor ones, like, like the ongoing stuff with uh, Charlie, Charlotte Pollard, who is my favorite companion of all time. Uh, that's off the top of my head. Uh, my absolute favorite audio drama, just to tell you, is Scherzo, because it is a story that can only be done in the audio dramas. Uh, anywho, I'm hoping you and Vega are comfortable after your move, having recently completed three different moves myself over the last year. Jeez. Over, I know the hassle it can be. Good luck with your lives, your respective shows, and of course, the planning and event of your upcoming nuptials. Hmm. Thanks for all you do, and keep up the good work. From Jake Loftus. P.S. I suggest listening to the River Song Tapes on a computer or something that works with Region 2 discs because those were the only ways I could listen to it because my car CD player did not play it. That's all right. I ripped them anyway into MP3s. All right. We got something from C. Jirasi. It's Robotech, the Sentinels, Rubicon. We have, like, when we, when, we, when we were actually trying to organize all the comics, we had, like, five or six different Ro Robotech miniseries. <laughs> It's amazing just how big a franchise that is. Okay, um, 
This is from Brian Wilmer, so we have this package right here. Ah, why don't you open that up and we'll see what's inside. Here. Also, I probably have to put take a cap off of this thing if I'm going to drink from it. <laughs> uh, it's Brian Wilmer. Hope you two are doing well. It's playing some more stuff. This is like, oh, I think it's the same... Same letter. Yeah, it is the same letter. It just has color. Uh, yep, so why don't you show off what we got in there. All right, so we got the My Little Pony, like, magazine? Magical Magic Magazine. So it has, like, posters and stuff in it. And, like, games and stuff for little kids. And, well, I'm I'm a little kid at heart. <laughs> Thank you, My Little Pony. Oh, man, I, I got so much ponies. <laughs> we got... The complete final season of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, I've never actually seen the final season. I bit what bit bit during the during the time when I did watch the show as a little kid. I basically only saw stuff from like the first few seasons. So that's very interesting. I saw the nerds retrospective on it uh, mm -hmm. years ago. We got Sonic the he Super Special. And uh, let's see, there's some other stuff in here. Maybe another Sonic comic I'll eventually review. Teen Titans to Judas Contract. Yeah, people have been asking my opinion on that. I haven't watched it. Well, now you have no excuse. All right, let's see. I can already tell you the. You know what the problem with adapting the uh, the Judas Contract is? Show off the thing that I'll. No, I mean the other uh, DVD that's in there first. So I'll, I'll get into that. Then I will say what the problem yeah, is. Because there's more stuff in here. Yeah, show, show those off first, and I'll talk Avengers about this. Avengers Assemble. Uh, let's see. Oh, some My Little Pony. His My Little Pony collection pictures. Yeah, that he mentioned. Show that to the camera. One second here. Yeah. Oh, and, <laughs> and like a drawing I did years ago <laughs> of me and you as ponies. Uh, Remember this? Yep. And, that expression, I'm a horse. And a bunch of pictures of like just screen caps of us, like of our, like screen caps of us. Thank you. Hmm. Me giving you the poop sign. Of course. <laughs> Always got to show the poop sign. Okay, so Judas Contract. Here's the problem with trying to adapt it. You can't just adapt the Judas Contract. Because the Judas Contract is the culmination of the stuff with Tara. Tara was on the book for like a year or so. before. I mean, I mean, and mind you, it was about halfway into that where we learned that she was actually working for Deathstroke. But it loses all of its impact because of the fact that... Uh, that that the Judas contract is just the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's basically it's basically showing like the last fifteen minutes of a movie. <laughs> you, we we don't know what's actually you know it doesn't have the same quite the same impact as it is when it's built up over time. Mm. Now mind you that certainly could mean it's still a good thing, but the emotional impact is kind of lost when you make it like into an hour long animated feature. It's mostly for the fans who already know the backstory. Yeah. But what if people want to just watch the movie and never read the comic? Eh. Especially since they're older. Dear Lewis, I will preface this letter by saying I don't read comic books. Oh, bye then. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am a former... No I'm a big fan of Spoonie One and Nostalgia Critic and really liked your style and crossovers with them as well as the anniversary specials. I began wa oh, thank you very much. I began watching your show only for the characters I knew from superhero movies and moved on to just any episode. Hmm. I no longer watch Noah or Doug, but I never miss your show and look forward to updates every Monday. Well, very much thank you for that. I know some people basically have the same strategy of only watch stuff they're familiar with. Hmm. I really appreciate that you actually analyze and discuss comics. You don't just scream and rage and curse. There's a place for that too. It's just you know I've evolved. I have. I wouldn't say evolved. I would. Ch I have changed my style over time. Now I scream and I analyze. <laughs> Even if I don't know anything about the comics you're reviewing, this type of approach makes your material very accessible and enjoyable anyway. I also find myself heartily agreeing with your views on storytelling in general. Serialized story arcs and character development are important, heroic virtues versus designated heroes, characters acting intelligent and competent, and so forth. I'm sure you've heard this from lots of people, but I'm wondering if you ever plan to directly tackle superhero movies. Probably if people patron me to do them. I'm sure lots of folks who don't know about comics would be interested in learning the influences the films draw from the comics for story and character ideas. In the meantime, though, I do enjoy your vlog reviews of the films. I'm also a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't care much for GX growing up, but I read an old blog post of yours that noted the improvement the ensemble cast was over the original Duel Monsters. I made... After a convention where Little Kribo and I were on a panel together... I uh, uh, talked about, I basically, I, I wanted to write up why I thought GX was so damn good and what how it improved over the original Duel Monsters. 
So that's what he's talking about. You can probably look it up on my Tumblr. Uh, I like the original show, but yeah, anyone who wasn't named Yugi, Joey, or Kaiba got the shaft for story and character. Yep. I think it may be interesting to do a retrospective on Yu-Gi-Oh! like you did with Power Rangers. I've... Actually, their, um, Media Hunter is doing something like that for Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Hmm. Uh, they've done several videos for the original, and I think they're now in the fourth incarnation of Yu-Gi-Oh! So check out Media Hunter, because, you know, there someone's already doing it. Also just curious if you've seen the fifth series Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V. I haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, the series concluded in March if you feel like binge-watching start to finish. That's but, what they're on. Media Hunter's on Arc V right now. Let me let me finish Stargate first. <laughs> on the contents of the package I've sent, enclosed with this package is a bunch of Buffy the Vampire Slayer comics. Yep. Put some of those off there. Uh, I lost my place. The only comics I've ever bought and read. I'm not sure your opinions on Buffy. I love Buffy. I do not love Buffy. Uh, these have been sitting in my nightstand for a few years, gathering dust, and I figure they'll have a have a better home with someone who appreciates comics more than me. I have also included some Power Rangers plushies that you might enjoy. <laughs> I haven't watched the show since Zio as a kid, but loved watching HOPR and intend to see the new movie someday. It's actually rather good. A more bizarre piece of Rangers merchandise I saw was a series of MMPR Russian nesting dolls. Huh. I considered buying them for you mostly for novelty, but decided something more conventional would be best. Probably for the best, even though that is kind of weird, seeing Russian, uh, 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 Matryoshka dolls like that. Hmm. Uh, finally, I decide, I'd like to direct this paragraph to Miss Vega. As it so happens, I am a brony. I agree 100% with your declaration that Pinkie Pie is best pony. Yes. Though I also adore Rainbow Dash and Sunset Shimmer. Hmm. I also include something in the package for you as well. After all, what is Pinkie Pie without her party cannon? Thank you so much for this. Holy uh, crap. Like, okay, so I should take a picture and put it on Twitter, but they, I s recently set up the all the ponies. Like, I have not all of them, because some of them I have duplicates of. But, yeah, I have this, like, pony section in our living room. And now I'm going to have to fit this next to the um, Gardens of Harmony Pinkie Pie, which I have with the equ mini Equestria Girl Pinkie Pie with the party cannon next to Cheese Sandwich. I know how... I I know how prolific Pony Merch is. I admit I don't much watch uh, uh, your show, but I enjoy seeing you on Lewis's and always laugh at your demands for him to include more ponies. <laughs> Please tell me you made him watch the Power Ponies episode, and here's hoping someday he reviews the Power Ponies annual. I have not, although there's always time. Thank you, Mr. Lovehog, for the hours of entertainment you have provided, and keep up the good work. Please allow me to sign off this letter with my online handle instead of my real name. Sincerely, Drake Clawfang, Drake EC. Oh, and there's also a... Thank you, Drake, and also oh, Frey. Oh, this is... This is from the creator of Buffy. Well, technically, oh. it's... it. Well, here's the thing. Frey is technically Buffy of the future. Basically, it's Batman Beyond for Buffy. Oh, nice. Where... where... Uh, they, and in season nine, eight or nine, they actually had a Frey and Buffy crossover finally. Although the final season of Buffy featured Frey's weapon, the uh, the axe slash stabby thing. I can't remember what the actual name for it is. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we have a letter from. Yeah. Yeah. A letter from Untitled, <laughs> but. Here it says, Roland L. Allard II. How's it going? To keep you up to date about my diabetes, I've been keeping it on a tight leash. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes. Still eat the questionable foods, but not all the time, and little Owen with, within one me month's time will be entering the Earth. Oh, mm. yay! Lewis, I find the History of Power Rangers retrospective to be fascinating. Thank you. Granted, I'm not a Power Rangers fan, but I still... But I still like it. How dare you! Unlike last time, I'm going to tell both of you what I'm, I'll am i be getting this month. What you'll be getting this month. Uh, oh, we don't have the letter with, like, the box with us, yeah. but there's going to be some Silent Hill in it, and we'll go over that box when we get it. And some Sailor Moon stuff, and here's some questions. Uh, let's see. Lewis, have you heard about Artie and Staff getting pink slipped from Marvel for uncertain propaganda Easter eggs in X-Men Gold issue one? I have. I've heard about that too. G. Willow Wilson did a great breakdown of why uh, of why the, the passages he was quoting were bullcrap. But uh, yes, yeah. uh, thoughts on Captain America being a Nazi? Fuck you, Marvel. That's no. Fuck you. Now I now just to head this off of the pass. Yes, yes, yes. Hydra are Nazis. Yes, 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 yes. They are. Yes. Punch Hydra, kids. 
Yes! <laughs> uh, Vega, what do you think is the most darkest episode of My Little Pony? Uh, to, to you, well, to him, it's uh, Do Prince's Dream of Magic Sheep. That is the darkest, but also the most triumphant with its ending. And hilarious when you see uh, Big Mac in it. So it's a lot of things. But definitely that's my answer, just like yours. What is the one anime that got you really angry because of its sheer dumbassery? Oh god, this is hard. Ah, uh, Because of its so dumb... Honey, what did I rant about? What anime did I rant about lately? I'm sure there's at least some. They all just kind of become a blur after a while. Oh god. I have to think of something that made me angry. Oh, this is hard. Cause think of the idols. Yeah, but... Like, yeah, there's lots of idol anime that gets... Oh! Here's something recent. So, on Idols of Anime, I have a kind of separate series that focus is basically Idols of Anime, the hentai episodes. The third hentai episode would be coming out in, like, uh, late, early fall. Or maybe, actually earlier than that, probably late summer. And it's about cool devices, Fallen Angel Rena. I someone said, "Hey, this is this is an idol hentai for your thing." So I flipped through it, and holy shit! I think Japan has some issues. There's a scene with a microphone. You know where this is going. You know where that microphone went. The microphone went somewhere. And there's no mouth there. There's a pair of lips there, but there's no mouth where where it went. I, I take that, yeah, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a microphone. Also, also, um. Oh God! Oh God! I gotta do it! I gotta do it! What? Is the mic turned on? No, it's 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 up. Uh, anime girls, hoo ha! But is the mic turned on? Yeah, it's turned on inside of her. <laughs> it's turning her on. <laughs> I'm awful. I'm awful. Why, why, why do people watch me? Why do people watch hentai? Why do I, why did I, why do I do the hentai episodes? I don't know why. Oh yes, because people watch them. Idol Sister has almost 12,000 views since the bit. Idol Sister has 12,000 views. And based on. And that has a guy screwing his sister. And here's, and the funny thing is. Based off of the hentai idol shows you have described to me, that's the tamest. Wait, no, I, I think that... No, I think that's the... Oh, no. You're right. There's another one with... um. So, you have, like, a, a, a idol who has both genitalia. And, you know, screws her manager because, you know, they had a fury relationship. But this other idol is jealous because when he, her manager used to be an idol, they were kind of having their own lesbian thing going on. And, that's a, and that other jealous girl also has, like, a sex ring and thus, like, rapes other idols. And it's the most... No, Fallen Angel Arena is probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Fallen Angel Rena has no redeeming qualities in story or characters or content. It has surprisingly okay animation. So Idol Sister is the tamest of all these you've looked let's at so far. Let's just say, say, you know what? No, there's even tamer one with, like, more consensual sex than ever. And it's a hentai, so having more than one scene of consensual sex is a plus. And that's just one called, um, who knew something... Pi Pidol Z and it's nothing it's pretty much just 30 minutes of girls with big breasts getting fucked that, that's it that that's actually pretty that's the tamest one but yeah there's more fun. so so yeah you know, probably should move on at this point goodbye and good night Roland goodbye and good night you brought up bad memories I sent, and he sent a digital download for Doctor Strange, but that's not going to make me remembering Fallen Adrian. Why did I agree to do this? Why did I talk about it? So <laughs> along with this stack, I have another letter. Over. I'm canceling it. I'm canceling it. The show is over. This show, canceled. I pack it all back up. Send it back to sender. Everything's canceled. This house is canceled. Your face is canceled. This show, stop, stop watching. It's over. It's over. Go away! Click off the video! 
Good morrow, Lewis and Vega! It's been a while. While I watch and rewatch episodes of Atop the Fourth Wall a lot, I rarely comment on stuff. It's actually because of you, Lewis, as well as Comic Pop, Comic Story, and Comics Explained, and Cape Joel that I've gotten into comics. So, you know, just uh, if you want to have some more comic YouTubers, you know, some recommendations there. Uh, I could give a long list of all the comics and other sundry items I sent, but I don't want you all tired out and fatigued. Here, why don't you start just showing this off to the camera okay. while I read that off if they're not going to list them off. Okay. Oh, because it's a lot. Okay. Uh, all I will say that is that enclosed is the trade paperback of Maximum Ride First Flight, the adaptation of the first novel. I've never heard of this novel. Like I said, I know it's a long shot, but if you do have the time, I would love to see you uh, see a collaboration with Crimson Rogue. The book was better creator. With all that being said, I am honestly more of an anime person, so here are some recommendations. If you have seen any of them, what do you think? Uh, a Certain Magical Index slash A Certain Scientific Railgun. Never heard of it. Uh, I've heard of it. Darker Than Black. I've heard of it. Didn't get into it. Needless. I don't remember what that was about again. S. Cryed. Oh, I hated that. Read or Die the TV. Now, I have not seen the TV. I've seen the original OVA. The TV is much different. I, I've heard, so I've heard. Uh, Blood Blockade Battlefront. Didn't get into it, but heard good things. Trigun. Heard of it, never seen it. Trigun is good. D. Gray Man. Nah. Hamatora. I don't even remember. And, of course, the one people keep telling me about, My Hero Academia. Yeah, I, I have. we have, like, four volumes of the manga. And for a non-anime TV recommendation, I would recommend watching Grimm, a pretty decent occult detective show. I was tempted to send a few VHS tapes, if only because you said, uh, uh, live in the now, and I am a sarcastic reactionary asshole. One question before I head out. What would be some good recommendations for comics for middle schoolers, since I regularly help out at my county middle school? Ooh, ooh, okay. Squirrel so, Girl. Squirrel Girl. Anything from Raina Telgemeier. Like drama, sisters, smile... Ghosts. Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel's a Kamala good one. Kamala Khan. Miss Marvel. Jonesy. Definitely Jonesy. It, uh, both volumes are out. Uh, let's see. I would say the the Gem and the Holograms uh, uh, series is about to end. So, yeah, you'll be able to get trades for that. Uh, let's see. I think we got a, that's a yeah. good list there. I look forward to your content in the future, and I wish nothing but happiness for the both of you for the rest of y'all's lives and after. Sincerely, Taylor Kimmins, Georgia native, and YouTube handle, Yeti in the Den. Oh, thank so, you so much, Yeti. Thank you, Taylor. Yeah, there's a lot here. Here, Sh have, have to stack Yeah, give me lot. some of that, Ed, because there's, there's a lot here. Yeah, I've been showing it off to the camera. Uh, Haywire. Yeah, yeah, Tempest. Welcome to Tranquility. It's a Gail Simone book I really should read at some point. Escape from Monster Island. Valen the Outcast. Nightfall. Body Bags. Steel Grip Snark, Starky or whatever. Yeah. Tomboy, not that one. More Steel Grip. Fantastic Force. Psycho Grasp. Digitech. Graylor. Digitech. Graylor. Death Watch 2000 Hybrids... Hybrids. Mirror World Rain. Mystic from CrossGen. Rain. I haven't, ta haven't talked about CrossGen before. Kaboom, kaboom. Dark Ages. The Realm from Caliber. Nocturne. Pantha. Hyperkind. Dark Dominion. Out of Vortex. Justice Machine! Dynamo Joe! Velocity! Castaways! Ultraverse Prototype! Time Breakers! Ultraverse Prime! Catalyst! Agents of... something! Terra Obscura! Crossfire! Crossfire! Sundowners! Crossfire! And Rainbow! Tech Jacket. The Precinct. Dark Dominion. Light Brigade. Cyber Force. Broken Trinity. Xena Brood. And I actually have this one. I, I've talked, I thought about uh, reviewing it at some point. Broken Pieces. Crawl to Me. Divine Right. Like a few issues of Tempest. Armor X. Devil and Dare. As well as a few little books here, including Unicorns of Balinor, 
Captain Underpants and the preposterous plight of the purple potty people. And of course, help I'm trapped in a vampire's body. That that's a title. Or help I'm trapped in Fallen Angel Arena. I, I want this cover to be the to be the thumbnail art. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so there's actually there's, a few, there's two more here. Uh, Rugrats in Paris, the movie. Oh my God, that this was. I remember this from my childhood. This movie. I I never read the novel because it's like I had the VHS. So yeah, but Scooby Doo still. and the Vampire's Revenge. Also a USB stick. Oh okay, cool. It's uh, like three gigs. No, it's a USB three. It's sixteen gigs. Neat. Oh cool. Thank you. I don't know what's on that. Okay, so I'm opening something from Adrian Hamilton. Whoa! With the rainbow duct tape. We always love the rainbow duct tape. Rainbow duct tape is the best duct tape. All right, so Mr. Hamilton has sent us. Yeah. 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 Bubble wrap! A scroll of bubble wrap! Let's see. Let's Ooh. Hey, Hellboy animated. Check that out. Let's, let's show that to people. Ah. Eh, there's tape on it. Help. Help. Help pulls. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, Hellboy animated, Blood and Iron, Sword of Storms, and... The goodies? The goodies. The, I, I don't know goodies. what that is. It's some guys in, like, semi-fursuits? What? Kigu? Some guys in Kigu, they'll do anything anywhere, and they got the bike to prove it. Yes, it's the goodies. Uh, t a al alias Tim Brooke Taylor, Graham Garden, and Bill Lodi in three of their funniest episodes. Who, who sent this? It, Adrian Hamilton. It looks like it's a British thing. Good on the British. Ah, there's a letter. All right. And another USB drive yeah. with Batman on it. We got interview with Monster Girls. My fr some of my friends really liked the um, anime at a, like the anime that came out last season. Of this I didn't get into the anime. I tried one episode. It's like eh. I was more into Dragon Maid uh, last season. Uh, hey Lewis and Vega, I hope this letter and box find you too well. Also I'm glad. The turtles. I'm glad you guys liked what I sent the last time. And don't worry about bulk biceps tail Vega. I'm sure there was something that happened in transit. I'm just appreciative that you guys enjoy what I sent. Also, in response to your last few unboxing, I was surprised you'd never seen Gargoyles, especially considering that it does dip into some Arthurian lore, even with Arthur becoming an ally to the main characters in a couple of later episodes in the second season. I honestly think you would love Gargoyles. Oh, I don't doubt it. As for news for me, I purchased the first trade of Titan's Rebirth. Good. I'm, I, want, I want this book to succeed, and remember, people, pre-order the books. The distribution system is messed up. You can't just buy it. You have to pre-order it and get it on your subscriptions and comic stores. You gotta pre-order stuff or else they're not counted as sales. Pre-order. It's it's dumb. It's terrible. But it's the system that we got. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm liking what I've read and I've added it to my poll list at my local comic shop. See, they get it. Uh, based on your recommendation, I've become a member of your Patreon at the $10 range. range. See? They, they got you. it. They, they especially get it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Initially, from my end, I'm working on more fan arts, but also finishing up classes. I've not mentioned this before, but I'm actually studying to be a massage therapist. Oh, cool. Good for you. Perhaps if I meet you or be at a convention, I can give one of you uh, or both a quick shoulder massage. I've known many a massage therapist. And man, they are good. Now, on to the descriptions for this box, which are three DVDs, two comics, a manga, and a thumb drive. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Hellboy animated DVDs. I'm going to skip through these just because we have still a few more things and this is kind of long. Uh, the Goodies DVD, because I'm curious about this. Inspired by your sixth PO unboxing, Goodies Sexy Rangers. <laughs> I thought it would be funny to send you this obscure British comedy series, The Goodies. Goodies Fallen Angel Arena. <laughs> uh, TMT Adventures. On the new thumb drive I sent you, which is recognized by the bat symbol on it. na 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 bat drive. It contains some backup stuff and some music you might like. First is a folder, which contains scans of the complete 72-issue runs of TMNT Adventures. I figure you could use these scans as a backup in case a patron asks you to do a TMNT Adventures comic, and you don't have a physical copy of a certain issue or issues in time for the review. If I can't uh, uh, actually acquire a copy, then then I, I sadly have to turn down a patron if that happens. It's it, it, If I can't physically get the comic in some capacity, then I can't do it. 
Mm. Fist of the North Star was a close call because I was only able to finally find scans of the damn thing at the last minute. Mm. Uh, let's see. The Thumb Drive also contains a folder with several albums by Celtic artist Heather Dale. I sent these albums to you because multiple songs of her are based off of Arthurian lore. Mm. Some favorites of mine I would suggest to listen to are The Trial of Lancelot, Mordred's Lullaby, and King Sword. The latter of the three sounding like an epic theme song for a King Arthur themed TV show. And I've heard the recent King Arthur movie was supposed to, was actually really, really bad. <laughs> I end this letter once again with some questions. First for Vega, do you watch any pony reviewers on YouTube, like Silver Quill or Dr. Wolf? Not really. Like, I I don't know. I'm kind of not really into pony reviewers, because, I don't know. I mostly just read stuff like that. Like, I read Equestria Daily, like, every other day. I think that's the closest thing to that. Otherwise, I'm just satisfied with just watching the show and occasionally re-watching the show i really like the show oh, by the way new season is out and while the uh first and second episode weren't that great it really picked up especially with the fluttershy one that's not out in america yet but it came out in canada thus it's people are watching it online that like the last two for the next two weeks those were great additionally if i get more steam behind my reviews do you mind if i review cream cheese and bow I would love that, actually. See, I actually had another story planned for it, but it wasn't, like, I don't know, I just didn't have time, and I wanted to actually do a original story instead of just a fan pony story. But, yeah, I really enjoyed making that. But, man, it look, when I look back at it now, the inking is horrible. The colors are horrible. I'm horrible. But I still like the story that I did, and, like... I, have, I think it's good. Oh, thank you. And I then if I did do another one, it'd be a story I like jotted down ideals for where there's a third friend who is a unicorn like a Pegasus that wants to be a unicorn. Now for Lewis, I have four questions. Do you plan on re-uploading your earliest reviews in complete form on YouTube in the future rather than the two or three part videos? Yeah, not really. I don't like, the thing is, the thing you'll find out most online reviewers is we're not fans of our earlier work because yeah. all we see are the flaws. We see our bad pacing, our bad editing, like our, cra and vile. <laughs> our crappy audio work. And it's okay if you guys still like them. Good on you guys because it still gets me money either way. But for me, from a professional level, I just look at it, I'm just thinking, I could do this so much better now. <laughs> so there's really, and, and even then, oh, they're still in a. They're okay. still in complete form. I don't need to, uh, 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 I mean, just because they're not in one video doesn't mean you still can't watch them in their entirety. Mm. Uh, you said that you already had the first volume of Dominic Deegan. Did you receive it from a fan or did you buy it yourself? Uh, no, fan sent it in. Uh, mm. I have really no interest in Dominic Deegan otherwise, <laughs> sorry. Both, both of them? Because we had one that was sent recently and one that you already had on the shelf. Yeah, right? those were sent, those were sent oh. to my fans. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the story behind you? And finally, what is your story behind your gag villain Phantasm who appeared during some of the early previously on segments? And subsequently, might he be coming back in any way, shape, or form? No, he will not be coming back because Phantasm, in this case, is a reference to the character Phantasm from DC Comics. As I have mentioned before, my favorite superhero is Danny Chase of the Teen Titans. And, uh, during a brief time dur during... The Titans' latter days, uh, the new Teen Titans' latter days, they, uh, uh, Danny Chase faked his own death uh, on the instruction of Nightwing, and thus used his teleconnect powers to create the mysterious character Phantasm from a bunch of, like, from, like, a dirty brown rag, a hockey mask, and some gauntlets. And thus, and through convoluted comic book logic, he became Phantasm after joining with the spirits of Azeroth. Long story, not very good story. But I've always liked Phantasm's look and overall aesthetic, even though once he actually stopped being Danny Chase, it really kind of just became lame. You know, you know what could bring Danny Chase back? Teen Titans Go. Yeah. And you know what? I wanted them to do that just so you could hate it. <laughs> well, that's it for this letter. I'm sorry uh, this letter was, was longer than again with my descriptions, but I hope you enjoy what I've sent. Hoping to see you at ASEN, Anime Midwest, or another con later this year. From Adrian Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. I'll be at ASEN, but I'll be working, so, you know, because I'm a staffer, so, like, hmm. 
yeah, I'm not really doing anything at it but working. But if you run into me, just say hi.